whole universe. They did it. They made the best character design in the game. And her voice is so perfect. Farina is literally me. No. Think about it. Our names both start with F. Also, she oversees courts. And guess what I do? Genshin courts. She also seems to be a bitch. And I'm her bitch. She is literally me. Hello there, Flip here, and today, this might be the first time I've been excited about Genshin since, like, Inazuma. <laughs> Actually, real quick, let's go over the characters. We have emo femboy Naruto over here, and then we have another twink and his furry sister, and they both actually look French, so minus 100 points. Speaking of which, what the fuck is going on over there? And then we have this girl who looks really, really cute. She looks way better than her leaked in-game model. Walmart's Yanfei clone who doesn't even care that her friend pretty much just fucking died. And then the edgy Sonic OC I made when I was 10, followed by a literal baby. Then we have a pretty standard looking dude and holy fucking thighs. <laughs> she is also really hot, but there is still better. Speaking of better, we have our Lichino. She is a worse Eula, but being a worse Eula is still better than being worse than Eula, like everyone else in the trailer. Except my glorious, gracious, shining queen folklores, now known as Farina, the Hydro Archon. And I have never been more excited for a character in so long. She is so fucking cute. I just want to squish her until all her internal organs give out. And both her JP and English VAs are a treat to my ears. She sounds like such a bitch and I love that so much. I really hope she's as stuck up as I envisioned her to be because she so far has lived up to all my expectations. And I just want to put it out there, usually it's fine to have opinions, that's a human thing, not everyone will agree with everything. But if you think Folklore's has a bad design, sounds annoying or whatever, you are simply just incorrect. Your line of thinking is flawed and needs to be rewired effective immediately. Also, we need to think about it like stocks okay farina is an archon and also belongs to the best element in the game there is zero way and i swear to fucking god hoyoverse there is zero way she can be bad so if you start simping her now you can say that you liked her since day one me, I liked her since day zero, so I'm better than you, but being day one isn't so bad either. And the amount of guides and pre-release stuff I'm going to do is going to be insane. Make sure you stick around for that. And I can assure you there is not one Genshin content creator that likes Folklores or Farina more than I do. Now moving on from my cutie patootie of a wife, let's actually talk about Fontaine. First off, I want to say that I was actually disappointed by how they showed off the region and the gameplay teaser. I thought it looked really boring, it just looked like Monster. But in this preview, at least it looked to be vibrant and fun and the building design is just chef's kiss. It looks so much prettier than I expected it to be. I'm just curious on how they will do the rest of the overall design that isn't the cities. And hopefully the same passion and just how good the architecture looked translates over to how good the deep diving will look on the war environment. I had my doubts at first, but I will let Hoyoverse cook. Also, I think universally, even though I didn't like every single character in the trailer, I think all the character designs have massively stepped up and they all look well designed. Also, I thought Sandrone, I think her name was, the machine girl in the Futui trailer, would be the harbinger we fight in Fontaine. She's literally sitting on a robot and in the region about machinery and technology. It just made the most sense, but I guess not. I wonder what role Arlecchino... I... <laughs> I wonder what role she's going to serve in this story. And just because it makes the most sense to me, hopefully Sandron is also in this region too. Actually, speaking about technology, why are people so flabbergasted that a character shot a gun? This guy has had a gun since release. It really shouldn't be that much of a surprise in my opinion. Lastly, regarding the story, I've already said my hopes multiple times, especially in my video about what we need in Fontaine, which you should go watch. But I really really wanted more drama and a much more mature story. Even my wife Farina here seems to want that. Boring! I mean, why do I even bother? When are we going to finally see a real twist for once? And Orlochino also does seem like she's not fucking around. My excitement is just through the roof. From what we know about Folklores, we do know she's very interested in trials and the judicial system. And also when she was first appointed, the lock folk, basically just hydro creatures, did not want to fuck with her at all and they just left. Which hopefully means that similar to Raiden, Folklores may have an actual character flaw in the way that she rules, which gets expanded on and developed in the story. I also hope that Orlochino doesn't get an extremely shoehorned in Redemption. For characters to be playable, they first need to be allied with the travel 
traveler in some sort of way which is why we had child on the traveler come together which was nice and why <laughs> whatever they did to Scaramouche had to happen so if Arlecchino is somewhat redeemed or humanized I hope it's done in a natural way to where she's still a villain and a part of the Fatui was able to still be acquaintances with the traveler and the only way for that to really happen is if there's a third enemy in Fontaine which is again why I think someone like Sandrone is going to be introduced with the amount of harbingers in the game one a region just simply isn't going to cut it and we do need to ramp up the rate at which these characters are introduced we already know there are a ton of internal conflicts with the Fatui from the trailer we had, so Harbingers having opposite ideals on what to do doesn't seem too far-fetched, and will also give a good reason for us to be allied with them. And in terms of how the Traveler gets roped into this, Farina again said she is bored and wanted something interesting to happen, so maybe when she finds out a little Traveler has been tampering around with the Irim Soul, essentially messing with the Divine, she will antagonize the Traveler and want to oversee their trial for order or something. Speaking of the Divine again, I just hope we see someone from there. We are almost halfway done with the Teyvot story, Please, up the stakes. Introduce more permanent, long-lasting characters. It is the time for that. Anyways, going back to my favorite daylight activity of hating, let me guess the meta placements of the characters and what they'll do. Starting off with Fermanent, who just got revealed as a Cryo Greatsword. He looks fine i guess but he's a claymore user and also cryo which is not the best pairing unless he's completely off field cryo characters are quite saturated now we've covered everything on top of the fact that he's probably going to be a four star so i'm just going to say he's going to be one of those forgettable four star units that have a really small niche but are generally never used next we have lenny i'm actually not sure if she's going to be a four star or a five star probably a five star She's an Onimo unit as well, so she can probably hold 4vv. I doubt they would make another Onimo 5-star DPS, so I'm guessing she's probably going to be more utility or support, maybe even being the first Onimo shielder. She is also pretty cute, another cat girl, but we move. I don't even want to talk about this dude. He is just a worse, uglier version of his sister, but he doesn't have cat ears, so he's automatically worse. I'm guessing there's some sort of drama with him being a human and his sister being a cat or something, but I, I don't care, he's ugly. And he's a pyro character, so he's probably going to be mid. Now that I think about it, one of them is probably going to be a 5 star and the other one's going to be a 4 star and one of them probably buffs the other? I think that would make the most sense. Navia is very very pretty but um, she's a Geo- <laughs> Do I have to say anything? Unless she does something like Nilo to where she can alter elemental reactions, she's going to be ass. She will have to be above and beyond as a Geo unit to even be desirable. Also, I think she looks like a 5 star, but hmm. Charlotte is adorable. She looks a lot like Yonfei, and Yonfei is peak, so good character design. She's a cryo unit, and I think they'll probably make her a 4 star. I hope they make her an onfielder as she is really cute, but eh. Uh. Moving on, we have the biggest mid off of the century. The edgy dude looks like he's going to be Pyro or Cryo, I'm not sure, but he will probably be an on-field unit. The fucking baby looks to be Cryo or Hydro if I were to guess, and she's definitely an EQ get off the field character. No one wants to look at that for more than 3 seconds. Now onto actually good character designs, we have Nephew- I don't know- and Thick Thighs. I'm going to take the ultimate gamble and say that Thick Thighs over here is going to be a 4 star Electro DPS, and Grandpa is going to be a 4 star support, maybe a shielder. Orlicino is 600,000% going to be a 5 star Pyro on field DPS. If I'm wrong, shoot me. And lastly, my prim, proper, and pristine queen, Farina, the Hydro Arconte de Fontaine, will be the best Hydro applicator in the game with a high damage potential. And I've talked about her enough, so let's just leave it there. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on all of these characters, as I'd love to hear and respond to almost every single comment. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.